I got into music in the eighth grade when my aunt gave me a, a Franciscan acoustic guitar. But up to that point, I never played an instrument, really. And, uh, and she gave me this acoustic, and I couldn't put it down. And I just started like learning chords. And then it just slowly, gradually moved into like trying to write my own thing, and then starting a band, and kept trying after high school, and started the fray uh, a couple years out of high school, and, and then it just uh, went beyond my dreams. At the core, I'm a, I'm a songwriter, and I think probably what led to my success was a lot of luck, um, a lot of disappointment in writing hundreds and probably thousands of songs that I thought were great, and then when people heard them, <laughs> I realized <laughs> they're not so great. You know, it took writing many, many songs that were kind of lackluster or, or just okay, you know, to finally land upon or to just kind of receive a, one that just happens to fall in your lap and it passes through you and it's much bigger than you are. That's probably the, the kind of the impetus of, you know, I would, if you're to say success, but you know, fans, I mean, I'm, the fans that have listened to, to, you know, my music over the years, meeting those fans, when they share their story about, you know, what my lyrics or what you know, my song um, has meant to them and either they're getting them through this or a moment that they are using a song like in their wedding. There's no, there's no chart system in the music business that, like, that rates that. And that to me is the most, that's the stuff I remember. Yeah, this room does have, you know, incredible history. It's not fancy. It's a saggy 1930s bungalow with cracked walls and dusty paint and poor plumbing, but you can't deny the, the just what's the history and what's been done in this space, and you can feel that. And it's definitely once I once I saw this come available, I didn't know the full history, but I just came, and then I found out that you know it happened to be Bruno Mars' studio for ten years and. You know, and they wrote every hit record in this room and, and tracked a ton of songs in this room and and then learned that like he put up, you know, all the sound deadener pads and had his drums over in that room and once they made a little money from their first hit, they put up like the reclaimed wood on the wall and but what I do like about this space is, you know, I anticipate, you know, working with some young bands coming up this year and you know, bringing drums in. And like, all right, that's the Bruno drum room. So let's set your shit up in that room, and and, and you know, and just tracking and just banging, you know, bang, making a bunch of noise because the space can handle that. It just has a good, good feel to it. And uh, and there's an avocado tree out front, and I I like the, uh, the avocado tree. My ears have been, you know, kind of accustomed to to Adam. Uh, monitors. I, I I worked a lot on the AX77s at Henson Studio. He had a pair that you know I just got used to. I loved when I when I was needing a new uh, new setup for this room. I noticed that the new you know S3H came out, and and I was like, God, right, I gotta I gotta you know demo these. So once once we brought them in, I just couldn't like it was just so obvious that. I had to go with the new, the new model, the new, you know, S3H. So it was, it was, a, uh, it was kind of a no-brainer. One of the things I love about the S3H is the the ribbon is is not flush with the box and with you know it's it's set back a bit. So it just with these immediately, it, it, presence was was more around you and instead of right here in front of you. And, and then as well as just the, the overall depth. I mean, I, like I said, I, I love organic instruments. And to hear that space in the speaker, you know, that you tracked and recorded, you want to hear that depth and you want to hear that room. And uh, and no, they, they sound fantastic. And you just don't, you know, you don't, I, I sit in front of these all day and mess with different sounds and, and singing stuff and you know whatever and I leave you know 
5 p.m. or whatever it is after a session and, and my ears aren't hurting, you know, and that's huge because I can go, I, I actually get in the car and listen to some more music, you know, so uh, they, don't, they don't tire your ears out.